Come now and let us reason together, saith the Lord. Though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be white as snow. Though they be red like crimson, they shall be as wool. It's Isaiah 1.18 We gather at the Lord's table. This is a good time to come and reason with the Lord. Amen. To reason together with Him. <clears throat> of course, now He does the reasoning first and actually He reveals He reveals His reasoning to us. That's the glory of the table. <clears throat> He reveals, as He reveals the truth of the gospel to us, we reason together with God upon it. And in particular here, the Lord invites us to reason with Him about our own sins. <clears throat> the reason to reason together is to come to an understanding about an issue, to analyze it, and to come to the conclusion about the matter. <clears throat> I like the fact also that the Lord says here through the prophet Isaiah, Come now. Come, meaning come to me where I am. You, you can't reason properly, properly about the death of Christ from earth's point of view. You've, you've got to come to God. And he says, come now. That is, don't, there's no, there's not, nothing to cause you to hesitate. There's nothing you need to gather and bring. You, you come now <clears throat> before God. Come immediately without hesitation or waiting. Waiting's not necessary because the things that we're going to reason upon have already been accomplished. We come to the table of the Lord. We don't bring our own works with us. We have nothing of ourselves, nothing of merit to bring. The only thing that we have good is what the Lord has given us and made of us in Christ Jesus. So the Lord doesn't come and ask us to build something here. He doesn't ask us to come and work out a solution to the problem of sin here. He does not ask us to come and negotiate with Him. All the necessary work has already been done. So now we, we come and we reason together upon what's been done with the Lord. <clears throat> the Lord at the table here desires to show us the reasonableness of the work that has already been done on our behalf. And it's something that we can reason together with God upon. It's beneficial to God and it's beneficial to us. God has been blessed for it, and we have been blessed for it. What has been done about sin is just and righteous and complete. Amen. And if we allow, God will give us a fresh understanding of the whole matter again at this table. Though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be white as snow. Though they be red like crimson, they shall be like wool. Now, since this was spoken by the prophet Isaiah, he says, shall be, but when we hear this, we hear, they are. <clears throat> they are white as snow. They are as wool. I won't go into detail about the difficulty of deep red colors and stains and how to get those out. You've probably heard that before. We don't need a scientific explanation of how to remove stains to understand this. The idea is that our sins were deeply embedded in us. <clears throat> Our very nature was sinful. Sin was not something that was just on us, on the surface, but it was in the deepest parts of us. But however deep our sins were and however impossible they were to be removed, they are now white as snow. Amen. That is, they are gone. They are washed away. And we are as pure as if they never existed. Yeah. As far as the east is from the west, so far hath he removed our transgressions from us. At this table we reason, we reason with God upon what Jesus has done for God and for us. He is God's Lamb and He is the Lord's Christ. God needed Jesus to take away the sin of the world more than we needed it. The entire economy of salvation in which God is displaying His manifold wisdom depends upon the sins of men being taken out of the way. If sin is not removed, then God cannot fulfill His promise to give a new heart to men that believe on Him and to be their God. If sin is not removed, then the Holy Spirit cannot come and dwell in our hearts by faith. If sin is not removed, then there are not many sons of God, and there is not a temple of God and an eternal habitation for God. If sins are not removed, the grace of God, the mercy of God, the love of God, the manifold wisdom of God, none of these things will be made known if sin is not removed. 
but we know that sin has been dealt with to the satisfaction of the Father. And we know this because he raised Jesus from the dead and seated him at his own right hand. We know this to be true because Jesus has sent the Holy Spirit into our hearts <clears throat> and Christ dwells in our hearts by faith. We know sin has been put away because God is now the blessed God. He's been declared by the apostles to be both just and the justifier of them that believe in him. And he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins when we confess them. Now if God were not satisfied, then none of these things would be true. So he says, come now and let us reason together, saith the Lord. God is blessed and satisfied in the death of Jesus. Are you blessed and satisfied in him? Have you tasted that the Lord is gracious? O oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man that trusteth in him. Amen. Behold, for peace I had great bitterness, but thou hast in love to my soul delivered it from the pit of corruption, for thou hast cast all my sin behind thy back. Amen. Psalm 144, 15 says, Happy is that people that is in such a case. Yea, happy is that people whose God is the Lord. And Romans 8, 1 and 2, Therefore, there is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. For the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus hath made me free from the law of sin and death. So I ask you, brother, now come and let us reason together with the Lord.